Hi Capricorn, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. It's Farouche and I am doing for you guys your Lenormand reading for the rest of 2021. I haven't been able to do Lenormand in a while, so I'm excited to do it for you now. And members get to see this first. So hi members, thank you for being members and I hope you enjoy the preview. So first we're going to take a look at some oracle cards to find out a general flow of energy just to get started. We have the strength card. We have the remembering card number 39. Here you go. Let's see what else is here. Strength is Leo. Um, it's just like the strength card in the higher arcana. Only the first cards of this deck are trumps. Then we have breaking. And then we have God. Ooh, this hasn't come up in a while. Very powerful energy. And then we have useful, number 103. Okay, so I have a feeling as though you're going to have a major breakthrough in your life that is going to allow you to either work in a powerful capacity yourself or in some way uh, participate in something very special. I have a feeling that you're quickly moving forward for the rest of the year and you're achieving your goals like you haven't been able to in a long time. I have a feeling that circumstances had led you to such a place that you were working less, you were less effective, maybe you felt downtrodden or just brought down uh, by situations to the level that you forgot your spunk, you forgot your energy. It sort of psyched you out. And so now uh, you are getting more aware of what it really truly means or what your energy truly is about. And you kind of are remembering yourself, that you're remembering an aspect of yourself. And with that, you are gonna attain a lot of success and progress in your life. There could be someone around you who's very powerful too, this God figure. This could be an external person who comes in who gives you a lot of help and a lot of a lot of help, a lot of support and a lot of yeah, energy. Pluto is in your first house for the next 2 years. It's finishing up its transit there. Um if you're let's say under 32, then it's very likely that you have not ever experienced life outside of this energy. And so as an adult and so, therefore, um, you might be very surprised at how energy shifts after this period. I went through Pluto in the first house when I was in high school. It was a very dramatic difference. It had a huge impact on my life. And it's a really good transit. What it does is it gives you a lot of attention and power and personal power that then you can use in order to get advancement for yourself, success, in things you have a lot of energy and so um, when you have this frequency of Pluto in the first house let me show you so you can visualize it here so when you have Pluto in the first house like this um, basically you have much more energy to achieve things and not everyone can support you in the direction you want to go so not a, you know people tend to be only able to lift others as high as they are so basically, um, it's harder to find people who can kind of lift you above their station in life or their circumstances. And so you should be on the lookout now for powerful people who have the capacity to help you because maybe some of the other people who are wonderful in your life don't have the space to do so. So someone like that is coming in and because it's the last phase of this 10-year transit, over 10-year transit, um, uh, it's going to be the final stages of that that energy frequency and so whoever is coming in then uh, that person is coming in to help you this person is coming in to lift you up to take you in a good direction help you financially and all of these things there could be more than one person but there is one key individual that's coming up here so that's exciting and congratulations on that so now let's do the Lenormand it's been going really well. These are my Lenormand deck that's not published right now. It's an out of print deck. I'm thinking of doing a giveaway uh, with all my decks that I've made to someone, uh, one of the viewers. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I should just republish them, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, let's see. 
uh, your energy for the rest of the year. Your first card is the coffin. Now, don't get freaked out. I mean, it's a especially in the Lenormand, that's a scary card. But uh, what it actually means is that something is over, something that was tying up your time. Uh, you know, it's almost like gaslighting. And sometimes people are gaslighting you with nefarious intentions. They have, you know, their intention is to confuse you. Their intention is to to harm you in some way. Um, and and that leads to, you know, uh, general confusion. But sometimes life gaslights us. Sometimes circumstances do. And sometimes we live in a haze of confusion and, and uh, mis misrepresented ideas, misunderstood ideas. And I think that's what's coming to an end for you. So like I said in the intro, you had been living with all these thoughts and ideas that were like just confusing you or or confusing you from your true path and now you're very much uh connected to the right truth then we have the tree i'll lay down the seven cards and really get into it i like to just focus on the first card a little bit then we have the hand which is the hamsa my deck has extra cards after 36 for added frequencies then we have the mountains the mountains okay and then we have the book. And then we have the garden. Where are we at? Or one more card for this row. And we'll do several rows. Oh, the ship. And underneath that was the fish. So I want you guys to know that there's possibly some travel for work change of work, change of location. If you want to move and work somewhere else in the world, this is the perfect time to go, I think. I think you'll get some kind of opportunity. So you may want to look abroad if that's what you want. You have things, this is saying you have things in your life that are burdens, things that make a smooth road uneasy. Um, they could be prejudices. You live in an environment that's prejudiced towards you or you have a station in life, you have responsibilities that are not easy to avoid, such as dependent parents, children, uh, someone in your family who has a mental or physical disability and you need to help. Some, And they're not necessarily bad things in and of themselves, but they are uh, burdens or responsibilities that you have to nurture and take care of. And so it's your life is at this time very full of obstacles and hardwired things that are not easy to avoid that things that you have to follow through with and so that's kind of it looks as though that's what we're talking about here that that you want to go really far you want to go try different things and and do your be successful but you also are not going to give up taking care of a loved one and those kinds of things. And I think that this is saying, like, the frequency is very good for this. Astrologically, I don't mean to bring so much astrology into this, but since we're talking about it, you know, planets are here. The outer planets are in the lower part of your chart for your sun, moon, or rising sign. And so there's a different chart for the sun as the rising sign, just in case people are wondering. I'll do a video on that soon. But um, it's very true for Capricorn suns. In fact, I think these general readings are more accurate for the sun than the rising sign, but that's a personal opinion. Anyway, so we have uh, Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Chiron, and Uranus here. And so at this time, the focal point of your life will be very self-reflective, internal. Um, you're being brought to your familiar environments and asked to kind of uh, explore them or be in them. Whereas part of you really wants to go be independent and go, you know, rule the world or travel and find expansion and so this is a dynamic in your life and everybody's situation is different but the things that are holding you down they're somewhat changing and by the end of this period by December it's very likely that you are opening up your horizons and 
you know, you can do this a little bit. You don't have to go forever, but maybe you have an opportunity for go to go somewhere for a month or two um, or change something up, go a different direction. I think ideas are going to be very important to you in the coming months um, in September, October, November, in the fall. I think that um, this is showing up as like information coming into your life that is expansive and gives you that sense of expansion and consciousness, awareness. You, you will find lots of different opportunities around you in the fall as well. Lots of different things that will make your experience more dynamic and more diverse. And you will very much enjoy this frequency. Um, let's go back here. So this is how the past is affecting the present. And so one of the big themes is that there is a final change and a transformation that you have been under. And this affects how your day-to-day -day life is. And so your day-to-day -day life has changed. You also, it says, have, have a good foundation and a good stability. You have people who care about you. You have protective spirits. You have roots kind of settled down somewhere. So you do have a home of some kind, even though it may be non-traditional, it might be different than other people, okay? But where you are going is, it's kind of an adventure. For some of you, it won't be physically going somewhere else, which is, which is okay, um, but it might be also um, like learning about different places and expanding your knowledge about something. Um, Mars and Venus are heading up to that area of the chart and we're looking at conjunctions there in July in your 8th house and then progression into the 9th and 10th house over the end of summer, beginning of fall. And that's a really wonderful transit for you right until November. Um, you are in that phase of the year for you in which there's a lot of growth and expansion and so even though you do have a huge transit with those outer planets that have a lot to do with internal self-reflection, there's also a massive transit that kind of takes you up into the world and, and gives you that ability. And that's an annual, annual transit that happens every year. So through this time of year, it's just natural for you to kind of uh, get more connected with the world. It's a, it's a growth period of social activity in your life. And this year it's only made even more so that way because Mars is transiting with the planets. All the planets are sort of really close together at this time, so it gives us the opportunity to really grow. So you have more momentum to grow, more energy is in that area of the chart, okay? So I wanted to go through that quite in detail, but I'm cognizant of time. Now let's go on, on to the next part. We have the cross. We have the woman. The woman. Then we have the whip. And then we have the key. And then we have the butterfly. This is my card, an extra card in the deck. And then we have the anchor. And then we have the snake. Okay. I think that you're going to get much more uh, demanding with regard to where you want to be in your life. I think that you're, you have been working through the last five years issues to do with your identity and taking full empowerment from who you are. So being self, self-reliant or being uh, self-directed or taking initiative on things that you want has been growing in your life for five years. This was always about taking on your full personality and embracing it. Capricorn is a very powerful uh, sign to be born under or to have as your moon or your rising sign and so a lot of times when you have a powerful sign in your chart um, it you really a lot of people need to grow into it to feel confident to act with with confidence about who they are and asserting who they are most effectively in the world so that uh, transformation is underway it's actually about to be finished and so where you will go is 
in the fall you will be choosing which direction you really want to go and being very, very wise about which direction you're going. So there's going to be not manipulation in a negative sense, but you're going to be like snakes are very smart in choosing how they go and how they it's just a very cunning energy. And so you too will be selecting with a lot of wisdom and call and and cunning and you will be selecting the right opportunity in a way by seeing where where will be the next stage for your development the anchor where is your you're reaching a level of of self actualization and now you're your the next stage in your life better be a good one okay and what's influencing the present is the cross the woman and the whip some of you have had mother issues let's just face it or another woman in your life has been of an abusive energy um, you too, if you are a woman, you could have been in an abusive situation. Um, what I see specifically, what kind of abuse is a lot of chaos, a lot of fear mongering, a lot of uh, just weighing per a person down. So this is how the past affects the present. The first download that I got was the mother was abusive or the, the a feminine authority figure was abusive and cruel. Um, if you were with a woman in a relationship, she may have been extremely tyrannical with you. And so you have, whoever, whatever your circumstance has been, and it could be a spectrum. So your mom necessarily wasn't the culprit. It could have been a boss or something like that. And it could be much milder than an extreme case, but it is your catalyst to moving forward. So it, because of this situation, you, you have moved on. It's affecting the present still because you're living with the consequences. That's the part of abuse that really sucks, that victims have to work through the consequences of it and live with it for years after. And so, and so there's this, it just feels like, a, you'll know, you know what I'm talking about. So it'll be different for every person. Chaos, disorder, frazzled energy. Uh, erratic yelling, those kinds of things, uh, irrational. You know, um, I don't like to diagnose people or be that kind of way, but histrionic personality disorder or like somebody with BPD lashing out, you know, ber uh, borderline personality disorder, this kind of like extreme aggressive energy. And so, so you were around that. You could have also been around a lot of emotional violence. Um, maybe a lot of punching of the walls more so I hope it's not been directly physical violence at you but all sorts of violence are negative it just feels as though a person is crouching and there's a lot of uh, like f quick moving energy around them that they're trying to avoid that's what I'm getting as a download so it, it feels like a person who's trying to avoid the storm so this this is here but I think that in this is your center card, which is one of the best cards in the traditional Lenormand, all Lenormand. It means that a door has been opened, you finally found a way through the problems you have been facing, and now you're in a glow up. And so you've gone through a personal transformation. There's a long-term goal you're about to achieve. And I see you as, like I said, very cunning in cho choosing where you emphasize, where you pay attention, where you apply yourself. Okay, so we have clouds next, which is a very nice uh, spread. So um, I feel like, or message, I feel as though if you have temporary setbacks in the fall or days in which you somewhat worry how things will turn out, really don't. Don't, don't feed into the cloudy days, the rainy days, and know that you're in a good path. You're really clearing it now, Capricorn. We have the knot. A bond between you and someone else is breaking. So this woman, it could be somebody in the family because the tree is there. Um, but it really feels as though a relationship went really, really sideways for you. And possibly someone was extremely erratic, you know, like it opened your eyes. You know, people can, in different circumstances, de depending on 
the pressure. People can go like psychotic or crazy um, in situations from, so I, I hesitate to say like, you know what they're like, because I think when pushed too far, many people have weird reactions that they shouldn't be judged by because they're not that way most of the time. But I think it is very much you, you seeing what you saw in that interaction or where things have gone has changed things. It's the end of the relationship because of the behavior. Then we have the clover, oh, change and transformation. And it sucks when we know, and I've been in these situations when you've known someone even for a couple years and, and then suddenly there's a shift. And, you know, in all my experiences like this, be it with friends, friends mostly for me, um, I always sort of knew in all my relationships that didn't work out friendships or otherwise I saw I always saw all so, sort of knew and it's not because I'm psychic I think we all sort of choose to not believe right which is a part of building a relationship choosing not to believe doubts and stuff but um, but this is you kind of knew that about this person but you also thought they were great and uh, that was a surprise. So we have the lily, but I would, I really strong, I have a strong message for you. Basically, don't hold it against them. That's why I was being apologetic or defending them. I really feel that doesn't make it right, whatever happened, but I also feel like um, they reached a level of un being unable to cope. Now, that's not your business to like ignore or, but, but, in or a spirit is really saying this strongly that you should not think that that's it's it's whatever happened happened from them being unable to cope with pressure that doesn't mean you should be around them or or have you know any kind of interaction with them from here on in but i do feel like you shouldn't think that that's their, like, the other p parts of how they were to you were genuine. It's just this one part is either hurt. You know, when we're hurt and we have little hiccups in our personality, little hiccups in our personality have to do with, like, scars. Scars from how we were treated and how it affected our personality in negative ways and and how that's not healed. So everything from prejudice to everything else, everything negative that that is about us is based on some kind of warping of our personal development, you know, usually by outside circumstances. So we have the clouds, the knot, and the stork. A uh, relationship ended and people went their own ways in a different direction. This is how the past is affecting the present. So this could be of the distant past or this could be recent past, but it's definitely something you're healing from and moving on from and then here we have the clover very good luck change of luck towards uh, a new direction like i said it feels very karmic and synchronistic one phase of your life has ended you have begun this new path full of wonder full of new directions happiness and promise and then we have the lily scythe and the dog um this is concerning somebody who's older and I feel like um, I feel as though there's there's changes in friends for people around you as well. I'm surprised because there's not not that much going on in your 11th house, but maybe by October, November, you are going to be having the consequences of everything that's setting up now. Now I get what this is saying. Someone who will be your very close friend is not so close with you now because they they have a friendship in a different direction and I don't mean romantic I just mean they already have a best friend sort of energy and so that re that relationship is crumbling um, and it has nothing to do with you it's just the cycle people have grown apart and maybe this is a person who you've always wanted to be closer with but because of lack of availability like they don't have time or you know it's a just a it's just for you to find time and there's no space they have that space is taken by another friend and so I feel as though that relationship is going to fall apart and I think you're going to become that friend so you have this feeling towards someone oh we should be friends because we're very similar or something like that I think you're going to see by the end of the year 
you replacing that person, not with no ill will, no negative, no, no drama, no negativity. It's just you're going to become friends with that person you like so much. They may be older than you and... I think that they're like meant to be with you on this second stage of your journey. So end of something, looking for something else, confronting obstacles, and then now moving in a different direction, beginning to move at the end of the year. So let's go by card, card by card a little bit. I'll show you some highlights. So definitely an end to a situation. And I have a feeling that there's a lot of knowledge in how to deal with the situation that you learn from family members or that you learn from 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 you from where you come from like from your from your from where you come from and then we have the hand um so there's protection around you if there was gossip other women told you that there was gossip if there was you had women coming to protect you if there was slander behind your back other women protected you. They, they told whatever happened um, to whatever happened. They corrected the situations. There could have been, in some cases, even a confrontation with protective energy saying, no, you won't. This isn't how this is going to go. Um, okay, so the next energy. The men in your life are unwielding. So they're not going to compromise with you if you seek help from them through this situation at this time, you might feel you might get a kind of roadblock. There could you could be hitting some kind of a ceiling. Let me show you guys. And if you're a Capricorn man watching this, this might affect you as well. But when I'm looking at this, and I never thought of it this way, but I guess this is the first time. But um, when Pluto's in our first house or Saturn even. Um, which was the transit 2018 to 2019 to the beginning of 20, hold on, beginning of 2021. So it was 20, 2020 and 2019, Saturn was in Capricorn. It's a two and a half year transit. Anyway, so when, the, when Pluto's in your first house, you have this strong personality. And so female Capricorns out there, you might be experiencing... Uh, like chauvinism from men who see that strength with you through this transit that would have started in what 2012 when Pluto entered Capricorn uh, or 2013 I don't remember exactly the year but anyway the point is that um, it makes your personality very strong like a general and so men especially weak men pe men with weak personalities or who are insecure in themselves they will feel threatened by this and then you might be experiencing increased misogyny and chauvinism from them just because you have that pluto in your first house um so you're coming through as confident not everybody might be so happy for you and then you have the mountains which is like um yeah it's just people men specifically not wanting to give you room now guys out there i want to highlight this for you too because uh, the mountains can be like other men giving you a hard time as well. But it came through very strong for women. Okay, so next energy. Um, I have a feeling that in searching for people, you want to search for people who are like-minded. So people who like similar things or who come with a similar frequency or energy to you. Um, and I think that maybe so you might see some family who are from... Uh, from like a different part of the world or people who you don't normally see. Some of you might see a new family member you've never met before, so that will be good. Um, you're really the way to overcome everything. It feels like we're talking about something, like a, it feels like a one-to-one -one session in the sense that many of you guys, it just feels like you've been through something. And so this is like a confirmation the only way through this issue is to essentially move on so you moving on and by the end of the year and possibly even physically going somewhere will remove you out of the dynamics it's not that they're so bad that they're hurting you or bringing you down it's more like they are overwhelming you not overwhelming you what's the word 
they're complicating things and you have to deal with them instead of dealing with your life. And so the only way to, through that problem is to move on. Then we have um, your responsibilities and duties. We had that at the beginning, that you have responsibilities and duties towards something is your personal strength. And whatever responsibility you have, be it dependent children or parents or even a dog, a cat, a plant, whatever you're responsible to gives you a lot of strength right now. So, you know, uh, have that relationship to that. Um, in Japan, for example, there's the joke that all Japanese people are masters. It's like the mastership mentality in Japan's culture is like quite well known. And so people say these kinds of things that, you know, in, in Jap Japan, you can't do something. You have to become a master at it. Anyway, so I feel like, but it, it comes from a very nice energy of Japanese people really embracing the idea of being present in what they're doing and bringing extreme positivity into what they're doing to create something of a lot of value and substance. And so you too are gaining a lot of strength to embrace that thing that you're responsible to and you become like the master of of that energy okay I have a feeling that if you're a woman you have spent a considerable time alone um, it feels like alienated from the people around you by virtue of how they act so maybe even if you interact with them it's more of a gray rock situation where you're not really showing anything of yourself uh, not letting them in so that's affected you. you have a lot of thoughts in your mind from from that situation um, okay, and so I think that there's going to be an event, or there has been recently, in which there was a blow up. It was a fight, a verbal fight, uh, whip lashing, like, like tongue lashing, you know? And I think it's for the best. It could have completely ended a situation very quickly, but this is the consequence. You're finally free from that. Something that was dragging on is now over. Again, I want to highlight this. Oh, like go through the door, go through the opportunity. If somebody offers you something, say yes, I'll take it. Um, good things coming in for the next six months that way. It's like a reward after a period of, you know, uh, difficult times. Um, okay, and then I think you're still going through the change at the end of the year. So this transition phase is a longer one, which is really normal. It takes people want like when is it good like one day when, what's the day that it's going to be all over no it's oftentimes takes several months to a year um, but i feel like into the spring next year you'll be going through a massive transformation and and through that you're coming through much more cunning much more uh focused i don't mean cutthroat i don't mean cruel to others i just mean like sharp like a, snakes are very smart and so you're about to reach your goal and your destination, the bigger picture of where you need to go to be in the right place now. And so I think that you're not, there's, there's lack, of, lack of being naive in your actions in the future, okay? And again, don't let those clouds get you down. Don't let bad days or someone being mean to you ruin your week. I'll, I'll pick up your socks, pick up the slack. Uh, this is not general life advice, I guess it is, but um, for the rest of the year specifically, keep your chin up and you know that you're going in a good direction. Then we have the not, I'm so happy for you guys. Uh, so, um, so then we have um, the not, um, definitely a bond with someone else breaks and maybe this is the person that has been holding you back and that's already happened. So, um, and this person, the bond itself was toxic. It's tough when, you know, the, the problem with many abusive relation dynamics, and I don't mean extreme abuse, the confusion and people say, why do you stay? Part, part of the reason is, is bonding, because there's a bonding that happens in abusive relationships that's extremely toxic. But there's other aspects of those relationships in which a p we have to understand that the abusers also have positive characteristics because people, if we don't embrace the idea that abusers have positive characteristics as well, then people will get hung up on those positive characteristics and confused 
because they're trying just to identify with the negative ones. And being abusive doesn't mean that you don't have positive characteristics. It just means you have abusive ones that are also hurtful towards others. And so I think this is the kind of situation. And those abusive ones cause people to have setbacks and it's just bad to be around. And it's always a spectrum. So there's like, you know, mildly abusive <laughs> like jokes and, you know, where the person's not actually t overly hurt. But And then there's extreme forms. So we all have different degrees of those types of relationships around us. And, and many of us have different degrees of those qualities within us as well. So it's important for us to recognize like it from a holistic perspective. So I hope that helps someone. It's just some thoughts about it, just seeing the cards. And then we have the, the stork. Um, I, I really hope, I don't care if this does not apply to everyone, but I really hope that you, for those of you who it does, I really hope you do find your way through and I hope you find your resolution. I think that you're putting a brave face to the world after being bamboozled in a situation. And so just just keep your chin up and and go put the energy into your life. You're almost at your destination and it's going to take a couple changes uh, maybe a, a trip or two and some things need to happen around you and there's going to be good outcomes so yeah change <laughs> that's what um stork and then we have the clover a couple people got this and to me in this position it's just um you're maybe emotionally dealing with the change in luck and that's in itself something that you doubt. That's why maybe the clouds, like when it's not the perfect day, you start to believe that your good luck is gone. When people have gone through a very traumatic experience, sorry for the T word, but very traumatic experience or sort of got shaken up, sometimes the good times feel unreal. And so you really need to spend this fall accepting that good things are happening around you and rightfully so, that they're not going to go away and tell yourself that you may be having the experience of doubt because you've gone through circumstances that didn't feel good and you, there was no recovery there so soon. And so you started giving up on the idea of positivity or goodness. And so now it's just a reassurance that, you know, don't doubt those good luck things in your life. There's people around you, even this Scythe character seems a little bit friendly, so this could be a Scorpio for one. But I think that there's like an older person, a really good friend, and some people around. This could be also consolation for those of you who are leaving a huge situation behind where, you know, there's, there's people around you. There's uh, good people around you who sort of want good things, who help you in different ways who have resources for you to grow. I think some people are like watching over you so you can go in the direction. Whoa, <laughs> just the angle that I'm sitting. Uh, so you can go in the, my hands shaking, uh, but but not really. So, um, so, so you can go in the direction you want. These people are around you and they're, and they're uh, you know, leading you in this direction, ushering you out, okay? So let's take a look at, I went way over time, almost twice as long as everyone else, but you guys are worth it. Leo got two readings because I messed up. So we have Saturn in, in the third house of, so a lot's changing. You know what it's starting to look like? A lot of changes in your immediate environment between siblings, cousins, that kind of thing. Um, change of pace, change of you, you, this could be a sibling that was giving you a hard time or you could be the woman who's surrounded by all these people that bringing that are bringing in various energies so we have pisces whatever situation you're in it's time to you have moved on and congratulations but if you haven't if you're still stuck with it then go uh then you have scorpio Emotional understanding from others that's helping you in a new direction. And you're definitely going to glow up. Uh, 2022 is going to be beautiful for you. We'll do another reading for that then. But thank you for watching. I hope you like this super long version of the video. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Good luck. Bye.